In this video, we are going to discuss the architecture of our game save system, we are going to talk about the solutions that the Unity provides for us, and we are going to talk about the conversion of a game data into a savable format that we can easily save to a different solutions. Let's start by talking about the architecture of our save system. So we start with a game state. So th those are our classes and our variables that we have in our game and the game understands how to read them. But we can't really save them without creating some structure for it to be saved in. For example, formatting it to be saved in a JSON string. So we need to convert the data from our game state and to save it in a format that we can easily read and write into a form that can be then saved by our save system. So here comes our simple save system. If we save the data that we want to save into a string formatted with a JSON format, we can easily use our save system to send the string because this is a very basic type that can be easily saved to a file or sent to a server. So this way we can save it and read it back from a server or from a file. And our save system reads the JSON string and the game can then translate the JSON and recreate the game state that it, were, it was when we have saved the game. So this is basic architecture that we will want to achieve by creating our simple save system. Let's now explore different solutions to save our data. Now Unity provides for us the player prefs, which is an inbuilt solution to save the data inside the Unity. We can save a data to a file or we can send it to a server. Well, we can use player prefs anywhere in our project. To save to a file or to a server will require us to create a custom class that will do this job for us. Let's first explore the player prefs system. Player prefs is a Unity's inbuilt solution that allows us to store and access player preferences between game sessions. It is useful for testing purposes when you do not have yet the solution to save the data to a file and for the WebGL projects, since those doesn't allow you to create a file and to save the data to a file. You could, of course, instead use the web server and save the data to the web server. This is the least reliable solutions that can be used to save the uh, preferences like audio preferences, graphics preferences, but it shouldn't really be used for saving the game state itself. A more reliable method is to save data to a file or to a server. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on saving to a file. Unity provides us with the persistent data path that contains a path to the persistent data directory where we can save our data, where we can save our saved data to a file. And thanks to it, we can be sure that this uh, location exists and that we can access it to write and read from it our files. Now, when it comes to saving to a server, different servers has, have their own APIs or we will need to write some generic code to push a message to a server. In any case, this is the most uh, difficult to implement solution and we are not going to cover it in this tutorial. Now, let's talk about serialization. Serialization is a process of converting the data that belongs to the object in our game a format that can be easily stored and reconstructed. In Unity, serialization has specific rules. First of all, a field needs to be public or needs to be set as being serialized field. And there are some other rules that needs to be taken into account. As well as, we can easily serialize primitive data types like inflows double string, as well as the enums, now to serialize a custom class, for example, it will take a bit of work on our part to prepare the class to be serialized. Let's take a look an, at an example for the JSON serialization. So for the inspector to show a field in the inspector, we can easily serialize most of the components that Unity provides for us. But to actually save the object or object's data to a file, we will need to convert it to a JSON format. And to prepare our class for that, we will need to make sure that the class is marked with the attribute serializable and that the parameters that we want to save are marked as public or uh, with the attribute serialized field. 
Since this serialization only allows Unity to automatically convert the object into the data, we need to convert the data into a format that we can actually save to a file. And here comes the JSON utility, the inbuilt uh, tool in Unity that allows us to convert the serialized object into a string, which is actually human readable. So you can see that the object my class, int level, float, time elapsed, and string player name was serialized to a format that has the key, so the level and the value one, time elapsed and the value, and player name and ex uh, again the value. So this is great for the debug purposes, as well as a string type is very easily saved into a file or sent through a web to a web server. And a great thing about the JSON utility is that we can save to JSON any object that is marked as serializable, as well as we can recreate an object, so object of type my class, by calling JSON utility dot from JSON, passing it a type and passing it the string of the type JSON that we have saved to a file, which will allow us to recreate our object. While it may sound pretty straightforward, objects of type, for example, vector3 are not natively serializable for the JSON utility, and we will need to create a custom class or custom struct to save the data that we want to save, because Unity by default doesn't really know what exactly do we want to save inside our JSON file. For example, in our project, we will implement a vector3 int serialization that will save our x, y, and z value, as well as building data serialization that will save our vector3 integer and a enum of type cell type. We will get to it when we tackle our example project. In the next video, we will set up our project and create a simple save system that we will later use in our example project. If you are enjoying this tutorial, Please leave a like, leave a comment, it really helps me a lot. See you in the next video.